this Black History Month, we're bringing you the story of three strangers connected by the Underground Railroad, also pronounced railroad. <laughs> Last December, the company Ancestry arranged for six people from across the U.S. to meet at an historical church in Brooklyn. The journey revealed family connections and some surprises about their ancestors, which are documented in a 23-minute film. It's called Railroad Ties. The only thing the group was told before they got to Plymouth Church was that they had heroic ancestors from the slavery era. Adriana Diaz spoke with three of them only on CBS This Morning. Dear Scott, welcome to Plymouth Church. By now you know that it was the Grand Central Depot of the Underground Railroad. If you look around, you are among the family members of Anna Maria Weems, who has a very personal connection to your family. When they first got to Plymouth Church, Seth Nichols, Scott Pratt, and Cecilia Pendiallo received letters about their past that changed their future. Nice to meet you. Sky, okay. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. They were strangers then. I wouldn't know what to do without the two of them now. Yeah. Really? But now, back at Plymouth Church, just two months later, they feel like family. You didn't think that I would be ever sitting between these two guys and calling them my brothers, you know, but they are now, and I dare anyone to do anything or touch any one of them because they got a sister that's going to fight for them now. What they discovered is that they're not related through blood, but through a shared history. There's an amazing connection that yes. goes back 170 years, you know, that we've had the opportunity to learn about together at the same time. Seth is a descendant of a prominent Brooklyn abolitionist, Louis Tappan. I knew that my ancestor was an abolitionist, but I didn't have the real connection of who he was helping. One person he helped was Cecilia's great, great, great aunt, Anna Maria Weems. To escape slavery, she dressed as a boy and was hidden in Tappan's attic. So this is where the runaway slaves would be. She passed through this dirt floor basement of Plymouth Church on her way to freedom. And how does it feel to discover that past for yourself personally and then connection to the man sitting to your right? I mean, it just makes it 100% real. And it comes full circle because now I know my roots. And it gives me kind of chills as we sit here and I say that because down deep in your soul, you know who you are and where you come from. And now I have flesh and blood brothers to back me up and put that behind me. It's amazing. It's amazing. We love you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> As for Scott, he thought his Scottish roots would lead him to a prominent forefather. All day long I had been asking Seth and, and everybody trying to find that Scottish connection, that Alexander Hamilton connection. But his DNA but revealed something else. You are the son of Christopher, the son of Muriel, who was the daughter of Frank, who was the son of Mary, the daughter of Sophia Gray, who escaped slavery with both of her children through the assistance of the Underground Railroad. At the point of the documentary where your history is revealed, I was like, what? <laughs> That's right. Scott is a descendant of runaway slaves. His ancestors passed as white. This isn't like my great, 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 great. This is my great, great grandmother. Could have been dragged back into slavery. Mm. She was property. At the end of the day, what they wanted to do, and that was to pass for white, they did it successfully. So I'm so proud that I could be here with you today, but on the same token, all of my heritage has been erased. It's all gone. There's a lot of sadness around that. So you feel a loss for your African-American history that you yeah. never knew about. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why Cecilia is so significant to me. She gives me that connection to it. She fills in that gap that's been missing. I'm Scott, but I'm a more enriched Scott than I was before. How does this change the way you view Black History Month? I think we all inherit slavery in a different way. Some of us inherit slavery from, they were a part of it. Some of us inherit slavery that they still suffer discrimination today. Some of us inherit it as we lost parts of our family because they tried to play themselves as white. We all have to absorb it into a different way. For me, Black History Month, was history. It was sort of an intellectual exercise of something you could appreciate and learn a lot about. Suddenly I'm like, no, 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 actually this is our history. This is everyone's history. Mm -hmm. The Tappan family risked everything to give others basic rights. 
They knew that respect for each other could make America into a better place for their descendants, for you. For CBS This Morning, Adriana Diaz. That's such a great statement. We all inherit slavery in a, in a different, different way. way. Also, like when he said, you know, when you talk about black history, it really is everyone's history. Yes. I love him making the distinction about I that. hate the idea oh, of Black History I, Month. I, I it do should too. be every month. I, uh, it's not intellectual when you're standing in that church. Yes. It should be every month. And, and by the way, it's the shortest month, too. I just <laughs> think it should be, really, it should be part of everyone's history. It is. History. It's part of our history. I absolutely agree with that.